what is the wealth of nations? What constitutes the wealth of nations? What was it that made us rich? And uh, I had this thought, and I uh, uh, looked back in the history of economics, what was it that made nations rich? In the beginning, when um, we were young and our culture was still in, in cradle, the most richest nations were the ones that were mining things. It was important to be at the source of gold, iron, salt, or any natural resources. Later, it became important to be uh, close to oil or, or, or gas. Um, however, uh, recently, about two, three hundred years ago, um, mining things was not as important as making things. Uh, the richest nations were the ones who actually had manufacturers and had, had industries. Um, later on, about uh, 80 years ago, 100 years ago, it wasn't as important to produce things, but the richest nations were the ones who could service the things, who could actually be close to its customers. And as uh, we moved on, there came the age of lawyers and the age of economists and the age of accountants who didn't produce anything, who didn't service anything. They were just making things. So we moved from making things to making things. Then, uh, and this is coming very close to the age that we are right now, it's not important to, to make things. This is no longer the time of the accountants. It is not the richest nations, the ones that have accountants. As you know, production has moved to China. Uh, we no longer make things in Europe. Uh, the name of the slide is, oh, when we still made things. And it's important to say that 78% of Czech GDP is non-tangible. In other words, you cannot touch it. So if you put the GDP or whatever we produce in um, our country on a scale, uh, it, it weights almost nothing. In the beginning, everything we produced had a weight, it had a mass, it was made out of something that was solid and real. Um, and, but if you do that today, if you put uh, our production on a scale, it doesn't weigh anything. It's very, very abstract. And America's share of non-tangibles is even larger, let alone um, Finland and, and, and other countries. Um, so telecommunication industries, internet, bringing things together, bringing people together was very important. And this is the time that we saw a collapse of space and in a, in a way a collapse of time. China and Prague were again second, uh, second away. And you know, today it's extremely easy to call off call a friend from the high mountains in, 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 in Czech uh, mountains in anywhere in China. Uh, and the most recent trend now is links, which is just linking people, not really charging them anything, uh, and just providing a YouTube spa space, uh, LinkedIn, all kinds of Skype sorts of communication. This is a little bit more into, the det into detail. You can see uh, I gave an example of each uh, specific industry. Um, so anyway, my, uh, my thought here is that me, we as mankind are moving, when it comes to economic production, we're moving from specific production to abstract production. We don't make things, we invent things here in Europe and also in America. Uh, we have made non-copy-paste things, and now our thought is absolutely copy-paste. The disadvantage of an abstract thought, or a design, or a picture, painting, software, anything that's non-tangible, is that you can copy-paste it immediately, which is what is, in fact, happening. Uh, another move that we see is from automated production, such as such as the manufacturing, to a more human, um, human inventivity, creativity uh, approach. Uh, connected with all the things that I said before, um, it was important to have a certain position during the old days. It was important to have a mine and protect it and kill anybody who approaches it. And it was also very economically prosperous to destroy the tribe next to you because you could actually access their natural resources. Now, we've realized that it is the biggest waste to kill a human being because you can trade with them. And it is the miracle of economics that it can employ the biggest differences. If two people are the same, there is nothing that they can trade. If we have exactly the same preferences, there is zero trade that we can have between each other. The biggest economic wealth can be generated when two completely diverse people start trading with each other. 
so the game today is flickering. If you invent a new thing, you have to move on. If you create a new design, it will be copy-paste perhaps in three or four days, and you have to move on. And we are moving from position to a trend setting. That's something that we still have left here in Europe and in America in our culture. It is the, the completely abstract of the abstract, which is trend setting. Um, And all of this really leads to uh, the th three steps that you can see uh, from, from things to things to emotional design, creativity. Why is Google enjoyed by everybody and why isn't Microsoft? And these are the things that actually, at the end of the day, make the difference why you actually type google.com instead of uh, any of the alternative searches. So these are the characteristics of the old age that we are actually leaving, uh, uh, and uh, we are moving to, 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 uh, to this more kind of spiritual. Now let me give you an example of Google. Now this page is a page that's empty, and there is nothing on it. Uh, this is, you know, the internet is called the World Wide Web, so you can actually look at it as a spider web. And if there is something that's in the middle, it'd probably be Google. Google is the gate, and it is the gatekeeper of a trillion of million of information. But the page itself is empty. And the only thing that you type on it is your own words, whatever it is that you're looking for. Uh, Mr. Eckhart once said that it will not be the coal that will burn me in hell, but it will be my hand that is not made of coal. If my hand had the properties of coal, coal would not burn me, said um, uh, a medieval Christian mystic, Mr. Eckhart. The same thing was, uh, so he said, in, in hell it will be the knot that will burn us. And the same principle actually goes with Google. Google provides you with the knot of the 10 billion and trillion of information that you don't want to know. And it guides you to the very limited, uh, it actually rids you of all the chaos and of all the freedom that you have on the internet. I give you examples of, of, of two companies. It would be better if we put IBM, Microsoft, and Google. IBM actually still made things of iron and wires, and you could weigh it. Microsoft, you cannot weigh it, but at least you can buy it. You can go to a shop, you actually have to go to a shop, and you can buy a box. You could buy it without the box, but at least there's something that you can show your children. Today I've bought a box. Now Google doesn't sell anything. There is nothing that you can go and, and, and buy anything from, from, from Google. So, and this is the trend, Google's giving away things for free. And the only reason why it's Google and not anybody else is because they have an ethos, they have a story, they're it's in a certain way creative. Uh, and who would have thought some, some years before that uh, people, one of the best investment projects in the history of, of internet is linking people to be able to see their home videos. This is true. When I was, uh, when I was preparing uh, this lecture, I was writing it in, in my word, and this is uh, uh, just to show you how quickly things change. You can go ogle. You know, information isn't really what matters because every all little piece of information is on the internet free of charge to any Chinese or African tribe if they have the access to internet, which nowadays isn't that much of a problem. The problem is using how, knowing how to use that information, and that really isn't the problem. The problem is a culture that values certain things. We say the political culture. Today is a good day to talk about political culture in the Czech Republic. But uh, <laughs> uh, if that's not an oxymoron. <laughs> now, information you can copy, culture you cannot copy. You cannot have instant capitalism like we once thought, that you can add water and this fish whose death starts swimming. Uh, you cannot have instant culture, and we are learning it, and yesterday we've learned a piece of that again.